All right, guys, Dana White's Contender Series Week 1, 2023, and I'm super hyped for it, especially this matchup, because this is a very fun matchup to cover. I'm really looking forward to this one. Guys, Dana White Contender Series, I freaking love this time of the year. It's one of, my, one of my favorite times of the year where we get to break down some really good prospects, some guys that we think are going to make it to the UFC, and some that we're like, what are they doing on this show? Odds makers don't really know what they're doing, so you can make a lot of money here. A lot of the odds makers look at a record, and they say, yeah, they got a better record, so they're the favorite, plus 500 on the other guy, and it's just crazy talk, and sometimes you get some big, some good odds. This one's lined super close. I just saw the odds before recording. Odds do not, um, do not mess with my opinions on these because I do my tape study, and my, I make my picks and put my notes way before the odds come out on these, so I just happen to see these right before I'm recording this one. So either way, this is going to be a very fun fight. Dana White's Contender Series, I freaking love it. We got a lightweight matchup here between Bogdan Grad. He's taking on Tom Nolan. Now, Tom Nolan, only five fights in the career, but he's, he's won them all, so that's pretty cool. Uh, for Grad, he's got 11-1 on the career, 5-0 in the last five, though. The biggest thing, right out of the gate, right here, right there, I've seen, well, first off, Tom Nolan is six foot three, which is gigantic for lightweight, but I've seen Bogdan Grad list, listed at a couple of different heights. Tapology has him at 5'9", but I've seen a lot of his fights where they list him at 5'7", doing the like pre-fight whatever. So I don't know where it is, and it could be either of the two or somewhere in between, which would be 5'8", I guess. But I don't know. Either way, that is crazy. That is a huge, huge height and reach advantage for Nolan because he uses that, that range really well. We're going to cover that in a minute. But first, we're going to cover Grab because he's on this side of the board, and that's usually where I start. So... For Bogdan Grad, he's, he's a very solid striker. He's got a stiff jab, and he's just going to pick his shots really well. So the guy, he kind of sits there with a high guard, just keeps it tight. You know, he's got good head movement, you know, does what he needs to do, keeps the, keeps the guard up. He's got very powerful kicks, and he's going to pick his shots, stick the jab, just keep using that. And when he throws, he can throw combinations. He can throw single shots. just kind of depends what he's going for. But what he does really well is he makes sure that he's picking the shots that, that – when he throws, he's going for for effective, maybe damaging, knockout-style shots. He's not just throwing shots for, for no reason. He's not just putting volume out there. So he can maintain a good gas tank because he's not overexerting himself just throwing wild volume. But when he does throw, it lands, and it, 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 it really counts for something. So I do like that. He's not overly patient, but he is patient. It's all good stuff for Grad. He's a very good striker. Uh, great. Now, when it comes to the grappling... He does chain his takedowns together, which I do like. So Grad does have the takedown advantage um, in a lot of matchups. He doesn't use it often because typically what he's going to do is try to strike. Now, the cool thing, though, is for, for Grad, he's got good takedown defense as well. He's hard, to, he's hard to take down. A lot of times guys will try to take him down, and he'll then stuff it and get on top, end up with some heavy, powerful ground and pound. He's very opportunistic in his grappling exchanges, whether that be looking for, for ground and pound, Again, picks his shots, doesn't overexert, just kind of does what he needs to do, lands really heavy when he does land. Same thing looking for any submission attempts. He takes what's given to him, passing to a, uh, to an advanced position, same idea. He doesn't force anything. He just kind of takes what he's given. Same on the ground as on the feet, but it shows even more on the ground. Ground's very skilled, but sometimes that output against a guy that is a very high volume output guy like Tom Nolan can make things a little bit different because... Grad hasn't fought anybody like Nolan who's this tall, has this level of output. Because Nolan's going to come forward and use a ton of volume and use his length very well. He shows, throws long straight shots, but more importantly, he throws the knee up the middle. The knee up the middle, the reason that's really important on a guy this short is when you're 6'3", getting your knee to a 5'7 guy's chin is pretty darn easy. Especially if he's throwing these long shots, Grad knows he's got to get inside of those shots so he's not at the end of those long straight punches. Because what do we know about long, like, rangy strikers? We know that at the end of their straight punches is where the most power is. It's not when they're throwing punches like this and they're crowded. Those punches are a lot weaker. They don't have anything on them. Their hooks aren't as strong as their straights. That's what happens when you have those long, rangy arms. You get better pop on your straight shots. That's why you see the, like, long, thinner guys with, like, super lanky arms getting knockouts with long straights. That's just what you see. So for a guy like Nolan, throwing those big, long shots... Grodd's going to want to come inside of those, those punches. Well, when he does, that knee up the middle that Nolan has is very, very good. And when he throws that, getting up to that 5'7 inch chin, he can land that pretty easily. So the, for Nolan, 
He has the tools to stop a guy like Grodd pretty easily, even though he's far less experienced, like more than double the experience for Grodd here. But he has the tools. Volume, knees up the middle, uses that range very well, and he's got a very good varied attack in his combinations. It's not always just the long straights, although that's a big part of it. He's got kicks as well, like I said, the knees, things like that. So good striking, although skill for skill, I think Grodd's the, the better striker. Like If you put, the, put them both in front of a heavy bag and told them to work, who would you be more impressed with their skill? Grodd, for sure. That's not what matters in a fight sometimes. Sometimes what matters in a fight is how your skills match up with your opponents. So even though I think he's the better striker, I think both guys have really good pass to victory in the striking. Now, when it comes to the grappling, he's got decent jujitsu. The thing that he lacks is the ability to get the fight to the mat um, with consistency. He can get guys to the mat because he's just long, lanky, and just kind of drags people down sometimes. He does use his length to wrap people up. That is his best bet on getting a fight to the mat, as well as once he gets to the mat, controlling the fight. He's got those choking arms. You've heard me talk about it before. They slip under your neck really easy. We haven't seen a ton of, of submissions from him because, well, I mean, he's usually pounding people out with these elbows. He's got strong, he's got those strong elbows in the ground and pound because, well, what also comes with long, skinny arms. Pointy elbows, that's what comes with long, skinny arms. Tom Nolan has that. He's got very good ground and pound. It sets things up for him. The thing that I don't like in the grappling, he finds himself in a lot of really, really close submissions. Um, he was fighting, um, what was it, Adam Cook, something like that. Uh, he goes Adam Cook. And he, he was in an arm bar, um, and that arm bar was, I mean, a lot of guys would have, been, would have tapped to that. He thankfully has the length that he can use that to get himself out of positions that other people couldn't do. So he's been able to get out of a lot of these, but he's found himself in a couple of really close submission attempts in the five fights that he's had so far as a pro. He's been able to get it out, get out of them so far, but the level of competition isn't as high as someone like a, like a Bogdan Grad. So there is that. His takedown defense isn't the best. I don't think that matters for him because when he gets to the mat, he does that. It's similar to like what Chase Hooper does with his length where he can just kind of crawl to your back, kind of like, like he's a friggin' octopus or something, like reach over you and pull himself around. I don't know. It's, it's, it's something that those really long guys can do. So this is a close, close fight. I think on the feet, either guy can win it. I think on the ground, either guy can win it. This is a very close fight. I know right now Nolan is the favorite by just a little. Um, I think the odds are closing in pretty quickly. Um, for me, Grodd should win based on skill. But like I said, those knees up the middle, super dangerous. The fact that he's just so much lankier and just is so damaging on the ground as well. It makes it really tough for me to just to be all in on Grodd. But I am going to take Grodd. I think he's just, I'm going to, I'm going to side with the skill over the natural advantage in this matchup. Skill and experience over natural advantage in this one. But I won't be surprised if, if when Nolan's out there throwing these long straight shots, Grodd tries to duck under, go in tight and start landing, you know, maybe rip into the body, whatever he's got to do, get in tight to start hitting a guy like Nolan, and then next thing you know, he eats a knee to the chin and goes out. If that's how Grodd loses by a knee to the chin, hey, I told you that's the that's a possibility. Gets boom, right there on that chin, drops down, finish with some ground and pounder if he's not already out. That's a definite possibility, but I'm gonna lean with Grodd here. I do think he does have the, the better skill, and like I said, the experience is there as well. So let me know what you guys think. This is a close matchup, probably the best as far as like seeing how two guys who are both skilled in every every aspect matchup so i like this one a lot love to hear from you like the video if you've been watching it this far and you've enjoyed yourself like this video i appreciate you guys all tuning in and i'll see you next time